Hello, hello. Nice to be, nice to oh, see some okay. uh, nice to see so many people here in the afternoon. Uh, so we're going to talk about uh, equity crowdfunding. It's more and more popular uh, every day. Uh, there's more companies raising money uh, via equity crowdfunding. And uh, today we're going to have a fireside chat. Uh, there is no fire, but you can assume that there is a fire. Uh, with uh, the number one, uh, let's say, crowdfunding, equity crowdfunding platform in the Europe, uh, Cedars, uh, Anthony Dikonot on the stage, and uh, one of the biggest crowdfunding platforms in Estonia, Fundwise, and Representative Henry Laufman. Hi, guys. Nice to see you. So, guys, take a seat. So maybe we start off with uh, introductions. Um, uh, let's start with you, Henry. Uh, maybe you give a short overview about yourself and also Fundwise. Fair point. It's basically the my, my background is in technology. I used to run a tech and design company for, for seven years before coming to the funding funding side of things. So uh, the funding side started that uh, we did funding for one uh, festival uh, in New York. And uh, for that we launched a platform which, which we thought there's no point of just funding one thing, but we should fund the others. And we did a Kickstarter-like platform in Estonia called Hoheim, uh, which is uh, basically the funding of creative and uh, social projects. And so after running this couple of years, we found out that there's also need to fund companies and, uh, and they need different forms of funding. So they launched a second platform called Fundwise for the equity side of things. So this is now three years ago. And you, Anthony? Uh, my name is Anthony. I run Berlin office for Cedars. Cedars is one of the leading equity crowdfunding platforms now in Europe. It's actually my first time here in Tartu, so um, I'm very pleased to be here, to be honest. And even though it's pretty cold, I'm really pleased how warm it is here in this event. So it's, first of all, thank you all for being here for my time. Uh, a little bit of my background. So basically, I've been about two years at Cedars since we launched the Berlin office of the company. Um, before that, I've been on kind of on the entrepreneurial side of things, on the other side. I actually, my last business that I sold was in the fashion, and, and one of the products were actually had so we were chatting about this before, so I was in the hat business before, but uh, Henry is the guy that's wearing the hat, that's the one I wear around. And I understand you are first time in Estonia, right? It is my first time in Estonia, and I think it's really cool to be the first time at this such a great conference here. So Did you arrive uh, from Tallinn, or? How, how do you go by playing? I actually went through, I'm assuming there are quite a lot of people from Finland around here. Are there anybody, with, uh, anybody from Finland? Nobody. Nobody. Oh, there's one. Uh, I actually took a plane from Berlin to Helsinki and then I took a super small plane out down here. Um, and you like the weather? <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. It's cool. amazing. So maybe uh, we start uh, about uh, generally what is equity crowdfunding and uh, and what are the differences between different uh, crowdfunding platforms out there? Maybe Henry, you. We have a slide as well, maybe the tech guys can show the slide. So this is a kind of comparison of different platforms, so we can visualize it a bit. There's like four sectors, which is uh, two types of loan platforms, and uh, which are the lower part of the diagram. And then uh, on the upper right is rewards, like Kickstarter, which is these platforms are all uh, which are functional within Estonia. It just gives a kind of overview of what types there are. And then uh, in the left is equity, which is type of platform both uh, fundwise and Cedars. Oh. So yeah, the Cedars should be basically in the same bucket with the fundwise. Uh, yeah, the two platforms. Uh, we are both equity crowdfunding platforms, and we kind of wanted to start with this top level overview because the way you can approach the investors, the way you would fundraise on a rewards based crowdfunding platform, Kickstarter, and the way you would fundraise on any of our platforms would be slightly different. That's why we wanted to start with this kind of very top level overview. So, uh, what do you think? What kind of companies uh, should uh, raise money via equity crowdfunding? 
and why should they do it? I'm happy to answer that. Um, we have quite some experience in the field of equity part funding. Uh, I haven't shared any numbers with you yet, so I'm happy to do that. We have funded about 740 businesses with about 570 million that went into this company. So we have quite some track records, so to say, right? Um, uh, and for this, we can say that if you look at the portfolio of our companies, it is a very wide portfolio of companies in terms of the industries, first of all, because you usually know that VCs, they invest in certain verticals, equity crowdfunding platforms, Pretty much any company in any industry could potentially raise, raise on, any, uh, on any good crowdfunding platform. But the thing that we always look into, the thing that is very, very important, and I'm, I'm sure you would also agree with me, is what we look for in the companies that successfully fundraise uh, is the word that's called community. That's what we call, there should be a community around the company, and um, or the company should want to build that community around it during the crowdfunding exercise. Do you agree, agree with that? Yes, basically, the, and if you compare the work, for example, angel funding, I would say the angels are usually focused on a smaller segment and we are more wider in accepting companies. So it could be in the retail sector or in the uh, uh, brewery, for example. Absolutely. So, uh, and, and the good point is that they get a fan based investors. So it's really good to have a like, fan base, for example, 1,000 or 10,000 fans. So these could potentially become your investors. So we also see as uh, getting one uh, target is to turn your fans into investors yeah. or, or your corporation partner. Yeah. In terms of the stage, I would like to maybe you would like to understand why we cannot invest, why we do business. Basically, yeah, this, uh, we could say that uh, we have uh, both again seed stage, early stage companies, which are uh, just on uh, like first traction level, and we have also later stage companies, which might already have a steady cash flow and uh, want to grow or go up a level. So for example, go to being a local market player to export. So, what do you think are the top reasons uh, why companies should raise money via via equity crowdfunding uh, uh, instead of a traditional? Angel or VC money? Well, I'm, I'm happy to jump in this one. So, it's, I think, first of all, it's not versus, right? It's not either VC or equity crowdfunding. Right. What we see on our platform is about 61% of the deals that we have have institutional capital within those rounds that we fund. So, basically, six out of 10 companies that we fund during the round have a VC or a super angel or a family office join in the round. So that means that it's absolutely possible and actually recommendable to use multiple sources of capital for one round. Uh, this is one point. And the second point would be um, equity crowdfunding raises is not only about the money. So if I'm talking to a startup uh, and they say, hey, we want to come tap into the potential of your investors, just get the money, that's it, we don't need anything more. Probably it's not the best fit with us. So. Equity crowd raise is pretty much about engaging your community, engaging your customers, engaging a lot more people and sharing that vision of the company in the long term rather than just the short term kind of um, investment. Mm. I'll just uh, say it's a complementary thing because there's uh, some investment cases which come like we have one lead investor or agent investor who wants to put money in the case and he wants to amplify his money by doing crowdfunding on top of that, but it could be the other way around that the company comes and by that finds some bigger investors or corporation partners through the round. It's because the visibility might be quite large. For example, one case we closed last week got uh, 30,000 people were checking uh, or reading their uh, campaign page. And, checking the company while it was funded. Yeah, and if I may add to that, yeah. it's also one of the kind of examples that probably happen quite a lot on your platform and on ours as well. There are multiple larger, later stage companies, for example, that is closed in a series A or in series B, but they want to crave a part of that round, usually purely for marketing. Um, in our case, for example, it's uh, Revolut. I'm sure most of you know Revolut. It's one of the European unicorns. We were part of their Series B. They raised four million on seeders out of the 66 million that they raised from other VCs and index ventures, and they just opened up their crowd round only to their customers. So this was for them purely marketing exercise that ended up bringing 4.2 million in investment for them. Okay, um, what do you think are the main requirements from the company side in order to have? 
successful uh, equity crowdfunding uh, campaign. I would say the, yeah, the ability to uh, have a plan and communicate a plan, so they should be willing to kind of open up of uh, being able to arrange credit and take part in the, because they know who the customer or fans might be. And obviously, we can do part of the communication, but if they're not kind of willing to do their share, it's very hard to uh, market it. Yeah, I, I would absolutely agree. It's not any kind of numbers or multiples that we kind of look into. So the insight from our investment teams that are all the risk management and DD, it's actually the teams and entrepreneurs that are mostly engaged actually get it done, hit the target or over hit the target. So it's about the engagement of the team. It's about willingness to put the effort and work really hard during this crowdfunding campaign. How much effort does it take? I mean, is, uh, if you compare it to the just raising money from uh, angels or VCs, how much more time actually you need to put, put it uh, in there to, to have a successful campaign? I think the time is, is a bit more. I think it's a very interesting question actually. That's, uh, definitely here you can know that it's a measurable exercise. So what we usually say, at least on theaters, it's about five months that you would need for the process, meaning that you have preparation DD in the beginning for about two months two months fundraising on a platform and then one month legal and closing at the end. So you can pretty much already know the time frame when you start and when you finish given you're successful. In the case of business angels, VCs, this process can sometimes take shorter, can sometimes take a lot longer than that as well. Do you share that? Uh, yeah, I would say as well that it's a much more again, measurable process uh, than uh, because the, the, they might uh, go searching for agents for years and uh, Know, uh, find to find them from time to time, but it's uh, it's hard to say when you're going going to close around. It's much more concrete than, than that because when you know set, uh, set just, uh, your campaign up, you you set a uh, date or time range when it's running, and you can have to make it, otherwise the campaign doesn't succeed. Yeah. Do you also have requirements uh, of money committed before uh, before companies come to you? That they already have some investors who are committed uh, with their investments in order to have successful fundraising. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we do have certain requirements. So basically, this requirement go down to okay, uh, we need to have the probability of success of the business, probability of funding the business to be high. So for that, we said the kind of the minimum requirement that about 35 percent of the round target should be already pre-committed from certain other investors. And this is the, the kind of the number that came up from our back end from all the 740 deals that we funded. So this is the optimal minimum number that you would need to have pretty much. Mm -hmm. we, it depends on the case. We uh, we don't always require to have some kind of pre-commitment. depends on the type of the round. And uh, might be that, uh, for example, if you do a round which is kind of led by an agent investor, so they commit to kind of part of the deal at the beginning, which might be like 20% of the deal, but uh, in some cases we don't require, they just launch at zero. So, uh, so just find the deals through the campaign, uh, find the investors working. Yeah, but just, just to add to this, if I may, um, it all comes down to pretty much psychology, and um, crowd investment is very much psychology of uh, people that invest 50, 100 uh, euros, maybe a little bit bigger checks. And it comes down to, uh, in our case, it comes down to psychology of the crowd kind of follows the crowd in a way. So the more people are committed, the more investors are there in the round, the more money is committed to the round, the more... It's like snowball. Yeah, it's pretty much the snowball, absolutely correct. So but the, the point of the snowball is also that you start pushing it, otherwise it doesn't start to kind of form the first uh, yeah. The circle. Yeah. But, uh, but at the, uh, I would, I would uh, add to that that, uh, that that practically you could see that uh, if the campaign doesn't get, get off the ground, meaning that they don't get commitments at the beginning of the round, it's very hard to uh, uh, succeed with the campaign. So in, in our case, it's usually, you know, currently it's been success, uh, success rate 70, 70 percent, so we like two thirds of the campaigns that we left on our platform will make it. So how much uh, work is expected actually from the company side uh, to do, to engage those investors and to bring those investors? Because usually I think a lot of people assume that they are coming to the platform and uh, all the investors are coming and uh, it's, uh, the magic, yeah. it's, it's, uh, the magic happens. Uh, yeah. But I think in reality there is a lot of work you have to still do. 
in, yeah. in this way, it's, it's quite similar to the division. One good example is one brewer in the team does cider, they make cider, a different type of cider. So basically, they did like uh, pre investor days before launching the campaign, so they built up uh, like interesting expectations. So there was, uh, so the list was so good that when they launched, they got uh, basically their target for the first day, so they had to raise the gap to get take more money. And, uh, they, uh, they didn't want to give too much equity away, so they again, got it. But, uh, uh, at uh, 110,000, so they closed the strong. Yeah, we also have a very similar, really cool case. It's um, Tandem, uh, online bank, charity bank from the UK. So they do all the preparation pretty much. They invested about two months in preparation, really, really heavy preparation. But they raised a million in about 15 seconds. So it was a few years ago, they almost crashed our service back. And it's, it's not a Kickstarter, it's, it's, it's investment in the company, it's equity investment, so it was a really, really cool case. And we learned a lot of, a lot from it, our IT guys learned a lot from it on the like, back-end infrastructure and everything, because it was crazy that's, for us. That's a good problem to have. Yeah, yeah, but we have had the similar thing with, uh, with our reward site, which is crashed because of television presentations and because so many people thought the same. Yeah. But uh, what comes to the investor types, I would say it's uh, like a continuum or like fan investors on one side, which maybe do like 100 euro, euro checks or something like that. And the uh, professional investors on the other side, or angel investors, would maybe 20, 30,000 in. So the average is about 1,000 uh, per person. Mm -hmm. The majority is our, uh, our family investors. Like if you take by the it depends numbers. on the case, uh, but then it's usually, usually this uh, majority, 80% of the money is put by the smaller mm -hmm. investors. Yeah, in our case, I think it's pretty much the same, but like, I think it's it's more or less the Pareto effect. It's, it's pretty much works everywhere. It's the 20% of the, like 80% of the investment will come from the bigger guys, the bigger checks, and the 20% will come from the smaller investors. But in the case of crowdfunding, I think this, both guys have actually the same value because these guys actually bring you the cash and maybe their network but the smaller guys are the ones that are making this positive buzz. I have so many examples of people investing. The smallest check on Cedars is 10 euros. So people invest 10 euros in company, 20 euros. And then they go on their LinkedIn and they put, I'm an investor in this company. I just invested in this company. Of course, it's a positive buzz. There are people that are becoming ambassadors by just investing 10 euros in the company. It is really cool. Mm -hmm. So basically, they become more of, uh, engaged in the kind of ambassadors of the company. Absolutely, yeah. In uh, Cedar's case, uh, where are the most uh, companies coming from? Like what countries? And, and also, uh, where is the investor pool looking mostly? Can you so, explain about that? Uh, does anybody like? All right, let's let's go like this. Who knows Cedar's? Please raise your hand. Well, quite a few people. I hope you guys already invested or already tried it. Mm. So uh, we are a pan-European platform. What we call. But uh, our main base, we are headquartered in the UK, and our main investor base, as well as the main base of campaigns, is out of the UK. Uh, it's pretty much about 60% of our uh, campaigns are from there, and this same goes to the rest base. The rest of it's mostly Europe or around the world? It's only Europe, so we only operate within the European countries now, so it's only the European companies that are eligible to raise funds with us. And in the case, I assume it's most Estonian investors. Yeah, it's uh, kind of more local, if I say, but it's kind of slowly expanding. We just uh, closed our uh, uh, Latvian deal uh, for the one electric uh, car company last week. And, uh, and uh, our user base is actually from 80 countries, but it's uh, it just obviously uh, some of them are uh, kind of diaspora Estonians and Latvians in the, in the, in the last case. But it's, it's growing by the, basically by each case, uh, the user base is growing more. Uh, it's also maybe an interesting stat to add to the international aspect of it. So for us, what we see, we see the international, we have the European races and the UK races, so to say. And when we have the European races, for example, if it's a Lithuanian company, we, we did a round for Neo Finance P2P lending platform uh, recently, it was a small round, about 300k. So about 80%-ish of the investors and the investment will still come from the country of origin of the company. Just because the company has its network around there, you should not expect p and a German company to have half of investment coming from the UK. Even though the investors the investment landscape is global, it's still very, very local. 
I would say it also depends on the campaign type. Maybe if you have a brewer, it's more like hyperlocal thing that people know, around 100 kilometers around the brewer are investing. But it's if it's a tech company, it might be more international. Yes, and no, because for example, like an example that I would give is um, we did a few rounds for a company from Munich called Solar Motors. It's an electric car. So you would say they're based in Munich in Bavaria. So you would say, okay, car from Germany, pretty cool, right? UK investors would invest. Still, that's same eighty percent, pretty much. Yeah. So, so it's, it's mostly it's from Bavaria. Yeah, most from Bavaria. Yeah. 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 So there's a saying that uh, 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 cap uh, capital is international, but capitalists have uh, locations. Well. I think that it definitely makes sense here as well. Uh, how do you see the future trends developing in the equity crowdfunding space? Like, uh, what are the newest trends and where do you think uh, the whole uh, uh, crowdfunding would be in 10 years from now? Do you have any like, thoughts about it? I would say it's merging with uh, more of the kind of traditional investing, so it's kind of just like a technical channel of doing the VC or angel or other types of funding, so it's, uh, so it's kind of merging with this, and also private banking and this kind of aspect. Yeah, I totally agree with this point as well. There are quite a lot of innovations, so we are at the tech conference, there are quite a lot of tech innovations that happen in the place as well. So just an example that I would like to share with you is something that, a feature that we have recently launched um, on Cedars, it's called Florida Invest. So basically, it's a function on the website where you as investor can set your own criteria in terms of the area of the company, the, all, all the other things you can just like play with these things. And the, the, the algorithm will deploy the investment when all these criteria are met. So you can actually now sit down and relax and build a portfolio of companies just by setting the, like pulling the triggers once and having the algorithm do all the work. So automation, I think, is one of the really big things that is coming our way as well. One, one thing we haven't talked about is uh, reporting and communicating after uh, fundraising. So how how, uh, how this works and how do you see this developing? I would say this is moving to also kind of like uh, being uh, like a mini stock market in the sense of like uh, kind of the same but light uh, requirements of the stock market. Basically, that, that you have like quarterly reporting and uh, yeah. updates. So, we are also developing our reporting side, so it's uh, currently we are just giving guidelines of what the company should report on, but we want to do a more uh, kind of direct enforcement of what they, what they need to report. Okay, let's say I'm uh, like a startup and I want to, like, I see, like, I want to raise money via equity fundraising, it seems like a suitable option for me. And now I see like there are two, uh, in a way, competing uh, platforms. Uh, so uh, I could go to Cedars, and uh, I know it's a like, European company, and there's maybe UK investors, or I can go to Fundwise. And uh, what what kind of choice should I make? Like, uh, I think well, probably, why should I choose uh, Fundwise? I think it probably depends on where you're located as well. And, Let's uh, say I'm a Estonian startup, so. Uh, yeah. No, obviously, it's easier to do, to come our, at our office in Tallinn than, than to contact Cedars in Berlin. But uh, basically, it's a question of what stage you are and uh, what kind of investors you're looking for. Obviously, we have a good investor base around here, and we see this as good investors around Europe, but it's still a kind of local, as we talked about. So it's, uh, if you're based here, it's obviously easier to come to us for advice first and then think if you want to go to some other platform. Yeah, I, I would agree, actually. I don't believe that we are competing. I think uh, both of the platforms and lots of other platforms out there actually building up the space, creating a completely new asset class for a lot of investors. So as I, said, I think we are doing, we are like Growing facing the same direction in a way, right? And, so, uh, and then basically to your questions is, if the company is a little bit further stage and wants to expand international, wants to tap into the potential of international investors, it makes sense, even maybe after the round with you guys, it makes sense to come to a platform like ours and already do a second round with us, knowing how actually equity crowdfunding works. Yes, we, actually, we have had cases which have done uh, one round in us, uh, maybe one round in rewards, and other rounds in angels or some other platform. So there has been kind of cases where they have lose multiple platforms during their uh, cycle. Absolutely. Anything else you want to add? No, no. We, we, I saw the moderator. Yeah, we, 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 we
You know, time is our the only asset that we actually have. We think that we have money and stuff and people, but time is the only thing that we have or don't have. So I really hope that you enjoyed. You've got some knowledge, right? Inspiration, wisdom, what to do on crowdfunding platforms, how to approach investors, how to be a better startup there. Thank you, Doug, from, for doing this uh, panel. Uh, leading the discussion. Thanks. Thank you. And then we have Henry. Thank you. And Anthony. Hey, yeah, of course, of course. Awesome.